Hey everyone, Active Sin here, and I will be reviewing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. Is this the Ninja Turtles game we have been waiting for since Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time for the SNES? Well, this is made by Platinum Games, the masters of action, and we're coming off of Bayonetta 2 and Transformers Devastation, so this is very promising. Let's start with the graphics. This game uses a cell shaded art style, which looks like a gorgeous comic book come to life. I love the art style of this game. It fits the turtles perfectly. And was one of the most striking aspects of the game when I initially saw it back around E3 2015. The character models for the turtles, the foot clan, the assorted bosses are all great. Everyone looks as they should and you can tell that Platinum took the original source material of the characters and added their classic Platinum flair. Each of the turtles has their own mannerisms, movement, attack styles. They are fun to look at and they there is even a command prompt to get them to dance. <laughs> it captures the essence of the turtles perfectly. Overall, I think Platinum made the right choice going with this cell shaded look, which gives the game a truly visually striking look. There are several cutscenes throughout the game, one at the start of each chapter and one after each boss fight. It's used to explain what's going on in the main story. I don't want to give too much away, but I will just leave it at this. Shredder and the Foot Clan are up to no good. The cutscenes are great, they are fairly short, they are funny, they do a good job of keeping the story together, so you can get right back to the action. Which leads us into the next part, gameplay. Does this game stack up with the best of the beat em up genre, or is this game all looks and no substance? Well, unfortunately, this is where the game starts to suffer. For whatever reason, Platinum decided to simplify the controls of this game to the point where there aren't any real combos. There is a light attack and a heavy attack. You also get four special moves and a tag team move, where you can use two turtles to an attack an enemy at the same time. To perform a special move, you hold down L trigger and then the, a, a wheel appears on screen and you can press either a, B, X, or Y, and it will do a different special move. You can also upgrade these moves, or you can change them by buying different moves with your battle points, which are earned throughout the campaign by beating levels. Each special move has a cooldown time, and every time you upgrade the special move, special attack, the cool time will go down, so you can use that move more frequently and you can choose the moves that fit your playstyle. And you earn and unlock new moves as you progress through the campaign. There are also items that can be used as well from a pizza slice to regenerate health, to a rocket launcher, to a mobile turret, to a freeze bomb. There's a whole bunch of different items, several different weapons. These can be found in the levels, or you can buy them from Master Splinter at the Turtles home base. The lack of an in-depth combo system is disappointing, especially coming off of Transformers Devastation and Bayonetta 2, which are both made by Platinum Games and have incredible combo systems. They could have taken from those games and implemented it into this one but instead they decided to simplify the controls, which I feel was a mistake. You can switch between the four turtles on the fly, which is great. You can build each turtle to have different special moves and then just switch them as you go throughout the campaign. So it uh, varies the attacks and just adds to the gameplay experience and makes it a lot more fun. Unfortunately, this game runs at 30 frames per second. While the game is smooth enough, I didn't notice any frame rate issues. I feel the difference though. You can feel the difference but I'm playing this game from coming down from Transformers Devastation. That game feels a lot smoother than this. Everything feels more fluid. 
Uh, it just feels more satisfying. This game definitely would have benefited from being in 60 frames. And the fact that it's using a cell shaded art style, which I do like, isn't all that resource heavy, so there really is no excuse for it to be locked at 30 frames. Especially when we just came off of Transformers and Bayonetta 2. That being said, the controls are tight, though it does take a while to figure out how to access some of the commands for the turtles, like to get them to follow you or protect you, those kind of things, and uh, to figure out the weapon wheel for your special attacks. It takes a little while to get used to, it's a little odd. There are nine stages in the game, each ending with a boss battle, from Bebop to Shredder and everyone in between. The fo uh, the Boss fights are the focal point of the game, clearly, and it shows, as they are the best part of the game. As usual, Platinum does excellent boss battles. Each stage is a sandbox where you can run around, you can climb up buildings, you can parachute around the city, grind on rails, just to, you can explore to find more secrets and battle points to upgrade all your all your uh, weapons and stuff like that. The objectives in the game are really random. It goes from defusing bombs to stopping robberies to infiltrating Foot Clan hideouts. They are all very simple and uh, relatively pointless. You just complete them to earn more battle points. If you don't complete them, and nothing really happens. You still progress through the story. So, value. This game cost $50 brand new in the US, which here in Canada is $70. While it's not a full price game, I feel the price is too high for what is being offered. The campaign can be beaten within 4 hours. While there is online co-op, it doesn't work very well. And for whatever reason, there's no local co-op, which in a beat-em-up game is one of the best parts. Having your buddy sitting on the couch with you and just beating off some people. That's fun, but that's not in this. Uh, the campaign is fun, I, I enjoyed it, uh, but considering how short it is, the fact that it's cell shaded, which I like, again, but it's not nearly as expensive as like uh, super photorealistic graphics, you could tell this game didn't have the biggest budget. There's The music in the game is... it's okay, it's just kind of generic techno rock music and they didn't get the original voice actors like they did in Transformers Devastation uh, you could kinda just feel the budget difference in these two games and then on top of all that the game being in 30 frames again for a beat em up game that's pretty disappointing uh, that leads me to believe again that this game didn't have a huge budget so it's kinda hard to justify this price tag so final thoughts on the game I like this game I like this game a lot actually, but I don't love it. I didn't I don't love it the way I thought I would. The art style is great, but the lack of 60 frames, the lack of fully fledged combo system is really really disappointing. The campaign is fun, but it's short. The turtles have a lot of personality, which is what you want in a turtles game. The cutscenes are amazing. I really enjoyed those and that is a big plus in my book because they got the turtles down packed. They got that perfectly done. The bosses are all very expressive. They're all funny in their own way. They're, they're a joy, a highlight of the game for sure. There's definitely fun to be had here, especially if you're a fan of Ninja Turtles, but the game is not as good. Not as good as it could have been. Roni specials and 5,000 orders of breadsticks for pickup, please. Ah, uh, never mind, dude. Wrong number. <laughs>